And everyone said amen. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. My name is Pastor Scott Bonds, one of the pastors here at Kingsway. And whether online or in person, we're thankful for your presence today. If you could, if you're online, go to our webpage or to the email we sent out this morning with our online Connect card and fill that out this morning. Those of you in person will have received one uh, on it. Just let us know that you're here, what service, what your name is, if this is your first time. Maybe consider filling out just a little bit more information. We promise you we are not going to show up at your door. Um, we uh, just want to stay connected. Um, to you. And uh, for all of us, if there's ways in which we can connect, whether through our email or through uh, various activities and ministries of Kingsway, feel free to check those boxes and they will get they make their way to our staff who will reach out to you and to help serve you in any way, shape, or form that they can. Uh, at the end, uh, closer to the end of the service, the offering plates will come around, and if you could drop those in the offering plate at that time, along with your pen, that would be greatly appreciated. This morning, as we get started, just a few uh, announcements I want to share with you. Uh, we have shared for the last couple of weeks about our June mission opportunity. This is our way in which we come together to, to love and to serve our neighbors. And this month, we are partnering uh, with some of our uh, uh, shelters here in town that work with our unsheltered friends by providing um, uh, assistance through resources that they might need, cleaning supplies, non-perishable items, those kind of things. Um, you can find a complete list of, of things uh, in our weekly email uh, and drop those off in the uh, bins, one in the uh, entrance as you come in the south lobby and one in the children's wing. All kinds of things are needed to help our unsheltered friends and our shelters. We also uh, are having, starting this week, a class on spiritual disciplines. As we've talked about, it's Talking about spiritual disciplines are one of our pathways here at Kingsway, one of the ways in which we help you be shaped and formed spiritually to help you follow Jesus. And so we're going to take a look at Richard Foster's classic book um, on the topic and have a lots of discussion and opportunities for you to practice different disciplines that maybe you have never tried before. It's going to be Wednesday nights um, from 5.30 to 7 in Atkins Charter House. Um, that is the old part of the building, the original church. Uh, you'll enter the north side, and there's a driveway there and a door to enter in. That there's will be um, for the next few weeks to see how many families, young families with school-aged children want to come. There will be child care for that. But whether you've been through this once or a hundred times, we encourage you to come and to be a part of that. We also have another opportunity coming up uh, on an Enneagram retreat. You might remember that last uh, year we had a sermon series that touched on personal behavior and different behavior patterns, uh, but also underlying motivators of those patterns, the things that drive them. And the Enneagram is a unique tool that helps describe different personality types and how they interact with one another. And so as we have this retreat, we're going to look at how this helps us grow in our discipleship and how we can understand ourselves um, and how we can relate to one another as we are all made in, uh, in the image of God and loved by God. And so Kingsway is going to be hosting an Enneagram retreat on July 23rd. There's going to be a session of learning that will take place from 10 to noon, followed by lunch. And then following, by, following lunch, there's an individual one-hour session, or optional one-hour session until 2. Uh, but you can come for one or both of those, whatever works for your schedule. And we hope you consider being a part of that. There is a registration on our website. And uh, we look forward to joining with a, um, an Enneagram, a certified Enneagram leader, as we look at this opportunity on who we are and how we can uh, be the people that God has created us to be. Last and definitely not least, uh, this is, we're running out of time, friends, to sign up for Methodist Night uh, at the Springfield Cardinals on Friday, July 15th. 
with a 7.05 game time, and the gates open at 6.05. For $19 plus tax, you get a t-shirt, you get a box seat ticket for the game, um, and you also, if you're one of the first 2,000 people there, uh, they are giving away another poll for that game, as well as fireworks. It's a good time to join other Methodists all throughout the Ozarks to watch a baseball game in July here in Springfield. So that is ends on July 24th as far as our Tuesday, July 28th is the deadline to sign up. As you leave here, if you've not, um, somebody will be at our Connect desk to write your name down and get you signed up and to get a ticket ordered for that. So please sign up for that. Please come and have a good time with others across the Ozarks. Whew. That was a lot. You can always find out more by going to our website. Uh, or signing up for our newsletter on the Connect card where you can find out about that and more. I do just want to say children are always welcome in worship, but we do have two hours of dedicated children's discipleship, one being now. So if you didn't know that and want to take your kid there, that's great. If not, we're uh, happy to have you with us in worship. Um, so as we move to that piece, please stand for our call to worship. The Lord our God is great. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Come, let us remember the great things that God has done for us. Let us not neglect to teach our children the greatness of God. Let us not forget our past and those who have gone before us. We remember our history and we name our future. So let us lift up our voices in song and open our hearts in gratitude. Let us greet God with our hymn of praise. Let's greet those around us in Christian love this morning. If you'll remain standing this morning, we'll sing together our opening hymn. It is hymn 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, 139.
In case you didn't know, uh, and this takes you by surprise, today is Father's Day. Uh, if you've not gotten a gift, I used to say, don't rush out and buy a tie. Uh, I say I used to say that until one time, uh, the last time I said that, I had a friend come up to me afterwards and was like, I would love it if my family went and got me a tie. Um, so, uh, uh, Walmart and Target and the mall is open, uh, and if all else fails, a gift card works. Uh, but most importantly, time. Uh, today is a day where we do celebrate fathers, but also we recognize that um, for many, that is not always a fond memory, right? Some of us had uh, less than pleasant uh, memories of our fathers, but others have no memories of their fathers. Um, you know, father fatherlessness is an issue in our country um, that uh, is uh, on epidemic levels. And so today, uh, as we pray, we remember those who uh, have struggled with abuse and, and those kind of things or fatherlessness. But at the same time, we're thankful for the church. Because friends, scriptures say over and over and over again that um, Paul uses a lot of language about one another being role, these kind of roles as fathers. He uses words like guardians and uh, father in the faith. And so we can come today in, in thankfulness that we have people around us who, as my uh, best friend says, uh, can take the place of faux daddies. Um, and so uh, men uh, who can gather around us, um, other people who can gather around us and speak words of grace and truth and love into our life. And that is one of the beautiful things about the church both men and women and all over the place where we can gather around younger and older uh, and learn and know and be known, um, where we can gather in community and find support, encourage, uh, encouragement, and words of grace and truth. And so if you're somewhere on the spectrum of, of missing and not having somebody in your life, I'm Take a look around, join a life group, join a Sunday school group, join United Methodist Men or United Methodist Women, uh, anything, um, and, and find people who can bear your burdens with you. Will you pray with me? God, we come today thankful for your church, your people, a diverse group of people who have different lived and life experiences, who come from different places, different ideologies, different political leanings, different socioeconomic classes. But together we love you. We are in the process of being formed and made in you. God, we're thankful that in that diversity, we are made into your image. We are grow and shaped and challenged. We hear words of grace and truth. We hear words of invitation and words of challenge. We can gain wisdom 
from just being with others. So God, we're thankful today for this opportunity to be able to sing songs and to hear your word proclaimed through Pastor Karen today, again, as being made and shaped spiritually. And so God, for those around us and in our communities who are struggling with with issues and not feeling like they have others to, to hear us and to see us, God, I pray that your church would be equipped and mobilized to take it to the streets, to go and to see others and to go and surround them and see them and to be with them just the way that you did, Jesus. So God, today, whatever it is that is needed in our lives, how we might be the prayer, answer to others' prayers, God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts today. Because God, we all need you. We all need to be drawn close to you and to hear your voice, to know where you want us to go and who you want us to be. But most importantly, to know that we are your beloved children, that you care for everyone. And so as we figure out our place in that, God, help us to bring our hearts in line with you by praying the way that you taught your disciples to pray so long ago when you taught them to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. That is our memory verse for the week for our children. That is shorter than last week's version let, uh, verse. Let me tell you, I know that well, um, that that is much shorter than last week. As we think of our children and their study and celebration in worship and children's ministry, we rejoice as God's children. We are joyous that we can come together in worship this day and be with God anew. My name is Pastor Karen Hayden, and I too welcome you as a part of our service this day. As I pray always for those of you I know and those of you that I will get to know, I invite you to pray with me. Um, today we have a, a prayer for illumination that is a, a unison prayer. And so I invite you to pray with me now as we prepare to hear God's word. Almighty God, we come to worship you today with open hearts and open minds. We want to hear and receive what you have to say to us in this service. Speak to us today as you spoke to those who went before us. Tell us the stories of your wonders and greatness. We are ready to hear them. Remind us once again of your love, grace, and love. Help us teach your goodness to our children and the next generation. Amen. Radio airtime and social media provide us with a number of life hacks helpful hints. I smile when I occasionally hear it repeated. Three things you need to know. And I don't care what I'm doing or what the subject is. I stop because I want to hear what it is I need to know. As disciples of Christ, when we're engaged in worship and reflection on God's Word, we will hear repeated things of what we need to know. God is love. God is faithful. God is generous. Of course, there are other ways of saying it or things that we might want to add on, but I hear these things repeated continuously throughout Scripture and, and knowing the life of Jesus. God is love. God is faithful. God is generous. Do those three things ring true for you? In Romans 1, Paul says the sacred writings contain preliminary reports by prophets on God's Son. His descent from David roots him in history. His unique identity as Son of God was shown by the Spirit when Jesus was raised from the dead, setting Him apart as Messiah, our Master. Through Him we received both the generous gift of His life and the urgent task of passing it on to others. You are who you are through this gift and call of Jesus Christ. And Paul finishes this section with, and I greet you all now with the generosity of God our Father. In Paul's rendition of the gospel of God, we are reminded in Jesus of God's love, faithfulness, and generosity. The core of faith is Jesus, who he is, God with us. And now, we are to share this generous gift. I want you to consider how we pass on the three things or however many things it is that you know on. What is it that we pass along? It is necessary for us to share. So what is it that we share? 1 
first I invite you to consider some of the most vivid stories in your circle of life. Start with this. What is the story most told in your family? What is the story most told in your family? What does that story describe? How is it passed down? What does it do for your family to hear that story repeated over and over? Stories can be very powerful. They can allow for celebration. They can teach. They can lift us up. Stories can also bring sadness. Stories can shame us. Stories can correct us. Now think for a moment about holiday traditions in your family. What are some of the family stories? Songs, instruments, or recipes that are handed down in the holidays? How is discipline enacted in your family as a result of story or tradition? What stories of generosity affect your family and your faith? How does it affect your acts of service because of the generous stories told in your family? Is there a first relative who you recall as a family to graduate from a place of higher learning? Or maybe there's a story of the first who had the courage to move out to the family land for a new adventure. How do those stories told in your family guide or shape your story even now? Last month in our first installment of this series, Generation to Generation, Pastor Scott lifted up the Shema. The Shema is found in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 6. It's the opening section of Deuteronomy. It is a collection of speeches attributed to Moses before the next generation of Israel entered into the Promised Land. Moses offers wisdom. Moses offers challenge because he doesn't want the people to repeat their former mistakes. He encourages people, get the word out. Impress them on your children. Talk to them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Possibly he would add, Make logos, put it on your t-shirts, your coffee mugs, your bumper stickers. Just don't forget. When we consider how important this story is, the Shema became a twice a day prayer prayed within Judaism. Jesus grew up praying this prayer. And when asked, what was the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, The first of all the commandments is, Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. And then I think how Jesus lived out the Shema. The Lord our God is one. His total focus in his life was to point to that. 
and then the way in which Jesus showed us you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am reminded of tradition and the power of story. Jesus loved God, followed God's leading, and was generous to the point of giving his own life for neighbor. It is a gift that we have stories, scriptures, and prayers that Jesus used, and those that followed in the tradition of Jesus used. What happens to us when we pray those prayers, when we recall those stories of scripture, practice of this story can keep God's love and loyalty in the front of your mind and drive you to obedience. The Shema and Jesus invite us to respond to God's grace with mercy and love, faithfulness and obedience to God and others. Today is a day of celebration and remembrance. Besides it being Pastor Scott's birthday, we also remember the stories of our fathers. Whether it is a tune that you hum because you heard your father whistle it all the time, or it's the family story of a heroic act that shaped your family because of what your father did. Or the groom preparing to wear his great-grandfather's wedding band next weekend in his own wedding. To the way I organize supplies or wash my car based on my father's instructions. Dads make lasting impressions. We consider how fathers, past, present, and future add to our stories. We give thanks for the way they hold us together, guide, and instruct. And also, like Moses, we acknowledge that sometimes there have been mistakes and patterns that we wish to overcome from the ways of the past. Today's marking of Juneteenth is another reminder of that. While we could stop with the story and say our country once embodied slavery, that is not our whole story. Juneteenth commemorates June 19, 1865, the date on which the enslaved people of Galveston, Texas, finally heard the news that they were free. This was two years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, one year after the Senate passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. Today, we can make Juneteenth commemorative, not for the horrific institution our country embraced, but rather a showcase of our strength of spirit to recognize wrong and set about making it right. John Albuquerque says, in the same spirit, America moves ahead today in leveling playing fields and achieving ever greater quality. Let us celebrate what this day teaches us including our country's greatness and our use of heart to hear and learn and to work together for all that is good and just. Today in our series, Generation to Generation, we consider this day as a time for assessment. A day of self-improvement and planning for the future. We hear more of that in our closing hymn today. But all of this brings me back to story and scripture. Natalie Merrill says, evidence suggests that the more children know about their family history, 
the less anxiety, less depression, and higher self-esteem they exhibit. The best love stories are not from books or films, but those from our own families, Jane McGarvey. Talking to your children soberly about values like tenacity, courage, or forgiveness can be less effective than telling a story about a person they know who lived through a real situation, Jamie Younger. And finally, it's just a story until it becomes your story. And so we keep telling these things that we need to know. God is love. God is faithful. God is generous. Have you thought about the, the three high days, high holy days in our church's story? Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, they all remind us of God coming to us, God saving us, God being generous and continuing with us. God is love. God is faithful. God is generous. And we recall Psalm 102, verse 12. But you, Lord, rule forever. Your fame lasts from one generation to the next. Psalm 119, 90 and 92. Your faithfulness extends from one generation to the next. You set the earth firmly in its place, and it is still there. If your instruction hadn't been my delight, I would have died because of my suffering. For the gift of Scripture, thanks be to God. Psalm 102 affirms God's eternity. You, Lord, rule forever. Your fame lasts from one generation to the next. The psalmist speaks of God's name as remembrance. The psalmist's hope for the future is, is felt because of their knowledge of God's action of the past. And yet God is not only in our past. There is an anticipated sense of action towards God's people even yet. The psalm tells of God's generosity and care and is to be shared with future generations. And then I read Psalm 119. When's the last time you read Psalm 119? It's our longest psalm. I don't think that's going to be our summer memory chapter for the summer. But it is a classic text of faith. It is a prayer, it is a testimony, it is a lesson. One may pray it, one may be converted by it, one can learn from it. And this Old Testament lesson reminds us of God's faithfulness and steadfast love. It foreshadows the whole of the New Testament. Your faithfulness extends from one generation to the next. The psalm tells of God's sovereignty, a faithful love that issues forgiveness. My favorite aspect of this psalm is the way in which the psalmist articulates how her life or his life depends on God. She or he is rooted in God's story and draws life from that relationship. Like story, we are reminded instruction comes from God, but must become a part of the servant of God. The gospel is not just a story to be heard. It is life-giving and must be recounted. It is just a story until it becomes your story. Again, from Romans 1, through him we received both the generous gift of his life and the urging, urgent task of passing it on to others. You are who you are through this gift and call of Jesus Christ. So in Jesus, we remember three things we need to know. God is love. God is faithful. God is generous. How 
how does the knowledge of those three things shape your daily intentions? How will this story shape the mission and vision of Kingsway United Methodist Church? What does the knowledge of God is love, God is faithful, and God is generous remind the United Methodist Church and the whole of Christianity in its traditions and reformation? We know that God is faithful generation to generation. God is with us. May we continue the story. Amen. Part of our story is remembering the good gifts that God has given us, how we are able to contribute to future generations through our gifts, whether they be financial gifts of our time and spirit. And I celebrate the way all of those happen in this church and the way in which they will happen as we pause now to receive our gifts and and I always like to say, even if it's not something that you physically place in the offering plate today as the offering comes by, but you remember what you offer to God this day. Amen.
As you are able, please remain standing and join in singing our final hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing, Hymn 519. benediction. Loving God, bless us that we may be a blessing to our children. Help us remember who we are 
and from where we have come. Help us remember the things you have done for us in the past so we can teach them to our children. May we give them hope and enthusiasm for the future. May we give them openness to your holy message of forgiveness, grace, and love. May they too want to walk in the paths of righteousness. May your word live in them for generations to come. Hear us as we go to share with the world.